The cytoskeleton is essential to the function of all cells. It provides shape, movement, and anchorage for cells. But if something goes wrong with the cytoskeletal element, the cell can lose essential functions and cause dramatic harm to the organism. Therefore, it is important that we understand how the cytoskeleton functions so that we can help individuals with cytoskeletal defects overcome health challenges. In this video, we will explore the three different types of cytoskeletal elements, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. Microtubules are the largest cytoskeletal structures. They are composed of pairs of tubulin protein molecules, alpha tubulin and beta tubulin. Long chains of tubulin pairs, or dimers, organize into a hollow tube shape. The shape of the tube gives it strength. It can resist a lot of compression force and still maintain its hollow shape. This strength allows microtubules to maintain the overall shape of the cell. Like steel beams in a tall building, microtubules are like girders that protect a cell from collapse. Microtubules form a dense network that stretch to every corner of the cell. This is a photograph of human cells with their microtubules and DNA stained. Microtubules are shown in magenta and DNA is shown in teal. You can see the shape of each individual cell outlined by the web of microtubules inside. But they aren't just there to provide structure for the cell. This network also functions as a transport system. Let's take a closer look at this cell. Remember that although they're not shown, the cell is also full of organelles and molecules, all with a job to do. Some structures within the cell need to move around to complete their function. For example, the Golgi apparatus packages proteins and other molecules for export out of the cell. So how does it get them to the plasma membrane? Vesicles that bud off of the Golgi hitch a ride on special motor proteins that travel along the microtubules all over the cell. Like a railroad track, the microtubules allow objects to move around inside the cell. Motor proteins walk along microtubules, pulling their cargo with them. The Golgi vesicles, the cargo, are pulled along microtubule tracks to the cell membrane. Microtubules also play an important role in the movement of chromosomes during cell division. They anchor to structures called kinetochores on each chromosome, and microtubules shorten to pull chromosome pairs apart. This video shows a human cell with microtubules in green and chromosomes in red as it completes the process of cell division. Microtubules play important roles not just in the movement of things within cells, but also in the movement of entire cells. Cilia are short bundles of microtubules that can beat in a wave-like motion to move cells or to move the fluid around cells. Flagella are long bundles of microtubules that can either propel or pull cells in one direction. Cilia are present in many organs in the body and serve roles in motility and sensory function. In males, flagella propel sperm through the female body toward the egg. In the female reproductive tract, cilia line the fallopian tubes to move eggs and embryos into the uterus. They also line the respiratory tract in both males and females, from the sinus to the lungs, to move mucus and trapped particles out of the body. In the eye, non-motile cilia cover photoreceptors and allow signals to move between cells. In the kidney, non-motile cilia detect movement of fluids. The second major type of cytoskeletal structures are called microfilaments. The smallest kind, they are composed of two intertwined strands of actin polymers, each made up of many individual actin monomers. Like all cytoskeletal elements, they help to maintain cell shape, but microfilaments are also key to changing cell shape. Actin filaments interact with other filaments composed of myosin, two key components of muscle cells. 
Myosin filaments have structures that can extend and bind to actin filaments, allowing the two filaments to slide past each other. This mechanism allows for muscle cells to stretch and shrink during contraction and relaxation of muscles. Like microtubules, microfilaments can also give a cell motility, though via a different mechanism. They don't form external structures, like flagella and cilia, but they can help cells move by changing their shape. Amoeba use this movement to crawl across a surface using extensions called pseudopodia, or false feet. As actin filaments grow rapidly in one direction, they push and deform the cell to create a foot on one side. You can see this movement in action in this video. Changes in actin filaments can also create movement within a cell by creating a current of cytoplasm. Plants use this process, called cytoplasmic streaming, to move chloroplasts towards optimal areas of the cell for photosynthesis. Microfilaments are also essential for completing cell division in many cells. After mitosis, when duplicated chromosomes have been pulled apart and two new nuclei created, Actin filaments form a ring around the center of the cell between them. This ring uses the actin-myosin movement to constrict, squeezing the cell in the center and pinching it off into two new cells. You can see that in action in this clip of a sea urchin zygote dividing for the first time. The last group of cytoskeletal elements are called intermediate filaments, and unlike the others, they are not defined by their composition of a single monomer because there are many kinds of intermediate filament proteins. Intermediate filaments are defined by their size, which is, you guessed it, intermediate. The average diameter of intermediate filaments is 10 nanometers, but that varies based on what type of protein they are composed of. Like microfilaments and microtubules, intermediate filaments also contribute to maintaining cell shape, but they have their own unique function as well. Intermediate filaments are less dynamic than the other cytoskeletal elements, changing shape less quickly and less often, and providing for more stability for the cell. The stability of intermediate filaments makes them excellent as anchors for organelles that don't need to move around, like the nucleus. In this cell, the intermediate filaments, stained green, surround the nucleus and help keep its position stable within the cell. Intermediate filaments, called lamins, compose the nuclear lamina, a layer of filament just inside the nuclear membrane that provides structural support and regulates some of the activities that go on within the nucleus. Altogether, the three types of cytoskeletal elements, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments, provide structure and mobility for all kinds of eukaryotic cells. All are involved in maintaining cell shape, and preventing cells from collapse in the sometimes difficult environments of living beings. From moving chromosomes during cell division, to moving entire cells, to anchoring organelles, the cytoskeleton plays essential roles in all eukaryotic cells.